Um, for those of you that don't know me, Greg Barr, um, I'm Beef Extension based in Brisbane here. I'm actually down at the Redlands Research Station. Um, working on three different projects for DAP. One is obviously the project leader for the uh, stock tape GLM app. The Future Beef e Extension, which you've probably heard my Bob Dolson tones on the Beef uh, Connect webinars. And the third one is doing all the SQ Beef Extension uh, across between southern areas of Queensland here. So I'm going to give you a brief update on uh, the Stocktake GLM app and uh, a lot of this stuff you guys would have already heard. It's based on the previously well-respected Stocktake package which is a one-day workshop that we run and obviously Stocktake is definitely aligned along with the MLA GLM Edge package so that the two go hand in hand and one is springboards into the other. Um, it's a free app, you can download it, there's the website, you can download it straight off onto your device. It is a device application, it's not web based. So you can't use this through any browser or anything of that nature. Um, just to give you a bit of a, a further background, um, it was developed, it's been redeveloped into the new improved smart device by the Queensland Government. It replaces the old Stocktake Plus app which was originally released in 2013. The GLM app was released uh, early this year just before Beef Week uh, in March uh, and we have had really good uptake with it. It is designed for land managers, consultants in those particular industries and we're still working on it as we speak. Uh, it will be able to be used without the connectivity at all, out in the paddock and then when you come back in you can then upload and down, well, start working with the materials and then back it up to make sure it is backed up. has two primary functions, the land condition monitoring and the forage budgeting, uh, but for this particular session this afternoon I'm going to really talk about the forage budgeting tool and it contains all that that you can read there which is all the new spatial data and scientific information. It's inbuilt into the app. So as you can appreciate and understand, the app's architecture is very extensive and it's very complex because there's a lot of calculations going on in the background. So one of the big things that um, has gone into the app is all the new adult equivalent work. So are you all aware of the new adult equivalents? Because this is crucial to you understanding how the adult equivalents works with regard to the different classes of animals and all the relevant measures in regard to the intakes when you're looking at a forage budget and how you can balance that budget. So it comes down to that supply and demand. Um, inherent in the background data, it takes into account all the average regional stock live weights, uh, all the herd, pregnancy status, genetic makeup, everything. Um, it, the new AE rating now is what you can read there. A 450 kilo Bos Taurus animal walking seven kilometers with zero weight gain. That is the new definition of an adult equivalent. And I'm not going to take credit for any of this adult equivalent work. It's, I have to put this acknowledgement in. I do need to acknowledge the fact that uh, Stu McClellan, Cole Payton, and Ian McLean did all the work, and that can be found on the MLA website or the Ag Bush Agribusiness website, and you can read this in depth. What goes into the app in relation to the adult equivalents is basic level, entry level stuff, not the advanced or immediate uh, intermediate levels at all. So we start looking at an intake constant when we're talking and calculating demand. So we're looking at intake, a daily intake of an AE based on a production zone. And what is that production zone? There it is there for Queensland. So you can see Queensland split into three different areas of production zone where you have low, medium and high. And this is based on the intake of the animal for those particular regions. There's the growth rates that you can see and the intake constants relative to those growth rates. So this is where the, the app is calculating based on your production zone that you're actually working in for your forage budget. It's working on the long-term average annual steer, steer growth. So the app will do all this for anyone using it. When you translate that further, then you get into the classes of animals and the, well, the types of animals and the classes of animals. As I said, the types being cattle, goats, sheep. Uh, and then you start getting into the, um, 
the classes of animals which you can see there. And so realistically, what you're really doing is you're looking at say females two to three, and you're looking at a moderate, it's 1.12, and, and multiply that by the intake constant of eight, and it'll give you the intake in dry matter per AE per hectare. So it's giving you what the animal's actually going to eat. So you can then start to work out demand. We, we've also brought into the app competition. So we've taken into account horses and kangaroos. If you want to add those in, you, you can most certainly do so. And again, everything's based on that, that intake constant of eight kilograms dry matter. We've brought in merino sheep, looking at the sheep industry. And that, that table is currently being brought in as I speak. And again, the meat, sheep and goat industry. These tables are coming in. So you can, no matter where you are in Queensland at least, you can select what you're running and you can do your budget. So I'll just disconnect this now and briefly run through with you exactly how a budget's run straight off my iPad. Once it comes up, go. Cool. There, go back out. So forage budgets, you can you can do standalone forage budgets. In the app itself, you can set up properties, you can set up paddocks, you can then do individual forage budgets on a paddock base. You, it's how far you want to go and set up. But a lot of people might just like to use a forage budget on their own. Virtually standalone, I just want to do a forage budget on that one, this one and what have you. So in here you can see that there's forage budgets accessible yield sheets and sapling, uh, tree basal area for saplings. So in that far north, if they want to work out tree basal area, they can work off saplings. But let's just take a look at a forage budget. So in this particular exercise, I've got a number of forage budgets already saved. So I'm going to look at this one here. You give it a name, the naming convention is entirely up to you. You can then select um, your an existing paddock area, or you can bring in an accessible yield sheet. Everyone know what an accessible yield sheet is? Yeah. Okay. I'll get. I'll, I'll show you what an accessible yield sheet is in a moment. So um, you, we're just working in a paddock here. It's in the Maranoa. It's in Roma, and it's in a high production zone based on the um, the map that you just saw earlier. Two hundred and fifty hectares. You can see across the top. We're working it from left to right. So we then have set up the zone, we set up the productivity zone, which is apps picking up the particular column. We'll throw in some supply. So we put in a grazing day of 214 days. So just keep that in mind, 214 days. We then go down the, the, the sheet to fill in everything that we want to do. One thing that we have put in is the in, in all the little, put in the little information icon so you can just click on it and it'll give the user an idea of what's doing. You'll see down here, this information icon here, if they want further details, it will take them off to the library within the app, and this is all remote, they, they can be out anywhere in the paddock, it'll tell them what to do. So for tree basal area, it'll tell them what to do. So you put in your detachment, you put in what's unpalatable in the paddock, so we're now have a starting yield, we've done our, our starting yield, and then we're starting with two and a half thousand, and you do that either through pasture cuts, or if you want to use, you know, SIBO labs or whatever, as long as you're confident in the information you're putting in, it's like everything put rubbish in, you're going to get rubbish out. Just follow everything down. Use the information icons to, to, to watch it. You can throw in anticipated growth, anything as far as unpalatable three peaks, and then you end up with your residual yield. Okay, you want that residual yield so that typically this is done April, May. It finishes when the green date is for your area. So you want that yield, residual yield so the pastures are rain ready. They'll just come straight back to life. So it will calculate for you down the bottom there what is available. So we've got 706 kilograms per dry, mat or dry matter per hectare. So then we want to go into demand. Now for this exercise, I've thrown in 65 head, two to three year old steers. The app automatically calculates to 104 AEs based on the table that you saw there for the class of animal, for the production zone, and that intake constant. There's your demand. 
and there's your results. <clears throat> so you can see here, if you go back, we had 104 animals for that paddock. It stayed for that grazing period of 214 days, it'll take 110. So the balance, the budget balances. You can see um, a lot of it here, the feed even a proportion of palatable pasture. When you click that icon, it says 30% or less to give you the best diet quality in the paddock. Because as we all know, Cattle are fussy eaters. They'll pick all the Junoise juicy stuff first before they get to the rubbish. So that is a clear indication of diet quality. So based on the fact that we wanted to put in 104 and we've got 110 at 37%, you, you, you do that little bit of math and you can say, well, we're almost on the money of 30%. Okay? Now, what we are thinking of doing is putting a back calculation in for the user. So when you come back here to your demand and you're putting in 65 head of two to three year old steers and you come to your supply and it goes, mm -mm, it ain't gonna balance. You've got two things. You can either reduce your grazing days or you can reduce the number of head. And the app we're wanting to use here, it will then basically say, well, you wanna use two to these three year old steers but you wanna try and put in, you know, 104, mm -mm you can only put in 93 and then calculate that back to say it's only this many head, it's only 58 head. Then it's up to you to decide what you're going to do. You're going to reduce days, you're going to reduce head. And this all comes back to what Ian in his quiz was saying this morning about stocking rate and pasture. This thing will do it for you. It's just a case of interpreting. So, except, let me go back to accessible yields. So an accessible yield sheet is where you set up, um, I've just set this one up here, it's, I just call it one tree, 2020 dry season. You can see the date that I've set it up. So if you can imagine that um, you have a paddock and you've got a bit of hill country and then you've got some flat, good grazing country and you might have um, a stream running through it, or you might have uh, some really poor areas where they're scalded areas or something, and you can got limited pasture growth. You can set up management units to give you an indication of what it is. So this might be better off to allow you to understand. So there you go. That's what a typical accessible yield gives you when you're thinking about it. So you've got the area and how much each area is in the entire paddock, what the pasture growth is, it will calculate it. So across the entire paddock, that's how much you've got. You set up your accessible yield sheet in the app, you go back into the supply section, you pull that accessible yield in, and it works off that accessible yield. Then you can add your demand, then you get your results. Then you can balance. So realistically, that's it in a nutshell with the, with the app. So, I'm happy to take any questions anyone's got. Short, sharp and sweet. Arthur, what about uploading photos? Say again? What about uploading photos? Yes. In land condition monitoring? Yes, yeah. it will upload photos, Tim. So, when I get, get out of here, I come into here, come into monitoring, go into land condition, and if I want to... Uh, just use this one here, I can add it, so it'll do three photos. It'll do your, it'll do your, your, your tray back, it'll do your landscape, and then we've added the third one there in case you want to put a drone or a third one in, into the actual land. So this is the land conditioning side of it, okay? So I haven't really covered the land conditioning, like the full app hasn't been covered this afternoon as to what it can do, because you can add stock records, you can add rainfall records, you can do a lot more to it but I've just really concentrated on the, um, on the forage budgeting side. And it's like everything, you can come in here, you can then come into here and say, okay, on a forage budget report, bingo, there's your report. And if you want to send it to yourself, away you go. And it can, if you want to do it as a CSV and then start 
doing slicing and dicing, go for your life, knock yourself out. Yes, Leanne? Just with like the photos and stuff, yep. um, is there an easy way to export them so you can compare them to like the actual images? Not really exporting them per se, no, other than the fact of having them in the actual um, reports and then having the reports on file where you can bring one out and have them sitting side by side yep. to see what's happening. Um, or you saving them into a particular file and then going through them and watching it over time. Yeah. So, yeah. Here he is. Come on, Steve. I love it. I've always loved it. But it'll only work in Queensland, won't it? It won't work in the uh, It will work. It, will, you, it has functionality um, outside of Queensland as long as you're working in some of the, well, Productivity zone wise, no, it doesn't have to, no. Queensland's the only one that map, but if you're going to do it, then you would have to equate, well, yeah. you know, as I go further south, am I getting into more improved, more temperate pastures, things like that? Well, am I going to use seven and a half as intake? Because see, as you get better, the intake lowers because of the quality of the feed. Or are you going to use eight? Yeah, you would never use seven and a half so as you go south. In the Kimberley or those things, you'd have to make up some. So can I butt in? I yeah. when we updated GLM a couple of weeks ago for the mm. recent thing, I actually asked him what his thoughts on were the productivity zones for Kimberley, Pearl, Bremer Territory, and he has given me an indicative mm. regional. It's not mapped out like that lovely map you've done yeah. for Queensland, but I do have indicative of all the other areas. Yeah. Yeah. So it has. Oh, it's always been promoted that the forage budgeting tool in the app has partial use in other areas. You still have, you know, all the same, you know, you've got to set the supply, add the demand to be able to do the calculations to get the, the AE tables. Yeah. Um, they would be, mm, they're more northern orientated, I, I would imagine, so that could, that could be a problem. Like, as I said, all those tables that you saw there, um, it's just your entry level stuff. Like when you see the final report that that Stu and Cole and Ian did, it really does drill down deep into what anyone can do as far as demand. Uh, so you, it's how far you want to go. Because um, those AE tables, they just have there's an indicator of what your Annual live weight gain, so you go if I put on 150 kilos a year, then I'll be whatever. Yeah. If you know, if you know it. If you know that. If you know that, then you then you can start to play with it and we, work out we what you want to do. And they're very advanced. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. even the old AEs, I mean, it was such a good tool. It's still a good tool, but yeah. you don't need all the bells and whistles to yeah. get so much out of it. Yeah, so, yeah. But it's it's like you know this used to be in a in a Excel spreadsheet sort of thing, and you could just plug in this field, plug in this field. But you know having the the, the app just click 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 and let the app do all the calculations in the background. Let the, you just choose the inputs you want to play with and what you feel it is. And then once you get that output, and then once we can get that back calculator back calculator in to give you some indication, because I always say that this is a, isn't this is a decision support tool, not a lot of precision support tool. It's just there to give you an idea of what's practical. Mm. And what they do is entirely up to them. Mm. But, you know, this this won't put out grazing charts and stuff, but it'll help you populate them. Yeah. So, yeah. Can I ask, do you have a full um, backup? Like if I'm out in the bush somewhere yeah. and I'm having trouble, I come back to the station, can I, bring, can I bring someone and sort it out? So yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's got an in, the information at Stocktake GLM that comes to me, and then I can actually contact the person and, and work out. Okay, what have you been doing? How you been doing it? Let me step you through the process. Let me let me help you. You know, people can't like the one of the big things in developing the Atlas privacy. Big within the department, obviously. We can't afford to have anyone's information. I can't access anyone who has an account, and I think we're well over 600 now, who have downloaded the app, I can't access their account. Not at all. I can't reset their password. And the security in this is the same as your verification code, your two, two, two verification password that a bank uses. 
that you know you set up, you put in your name, password, it will send you that six digit or yeah, six digit code, put that code in, bingo, it will set it. If you try and um, enter your password three times and fail, it will lock you out and your account needs to be reset. So we're very, and like any, any of the backup, any of the backup is held on an Amazon web server in Australia, not overseas, in Sydney. So your data doesn't leave the shore. And that was one of the reasons for the, um, for the privacy.